Hey everyone, Max Thrust here. Uh, gonna give you a little career mode slash tutorial. Uh, probably be something short, getting us to the moon, to Minimus, and uh, this is all in preparation for the new DLC coming out, which is uh, Breaking Ground. Uh, should be out like May 30th or something like that. So I figured, why not do a vanilla tutorial just to get everyone on the same page? All right, so here's the start menu. Go ahead and let's get started. We're gonna start new. I'm gonna go with career mode. I'm gonna keep everything on normal. Here's where you can load your flags. And then you just gotta give it a name. I'm not gonna go into all the difficulty options in this one. Later playthroughs and tutorials will do something more like that. All right, let's do max thrust gaming. Tutorial. All right, and let's get started. So once you start, you're going to come to the KSC, to your space center. You can go ahead and pause if you want to read through that. It just kind of talks about what we got going on. Uh, quick layout. You have runway, space hangar, mission control. You'll always be in this vehicle assembly building, launch pad, tracking station, research and development, astronaut complex, and the administration building. Uh, I will touch on all of these a little bit, but I'm not going to go into a lot of depth. So first thing you want to do when you get here is you want to orientate yourself and then go ahead and um, get some contracts. Being that this is a career mode, the whole purpose of this is to not only be cost effective, but to also gain as much science as you can to unlock tech trees. So first we're going to go in here, launch a vessel. We're going to mm -hmm. take that mm -hmm. one and gather scientific data. We're going to hold off on these two right now because these are harder missions that we need a little more science for. Okay, once you have that, the vehicle assembly building is where you're going to actually build your rockets. All right, again, another little thing talks about it. If you want to pause, read it, go ahead. So first off, when you start to build a rocket, you're going to have to have a command module. Here are two command modules. It's under the pod section. So let's go ahead and do the command pod. All right, so here's your command pod. The way I do it is right out the gate, I'm gonna put a parachute on uh, because I do not wanna launch this thing forgetting that I needed a parachute. So put a parachute on. Uh, being that our mission here is to gather science and do our first launch, we don't need to build anything massive. So we don't have anything really to build with. So we're gonna go ahead and lock this, uh, what's this called? The flea. And let's go ahead and give it some color. Um, you don't really need to do this, but I'll show you why I'm doing it. I'm gonna start off with a uh, non-pilot, which means I don't have SAS, which I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about a little bit later. So if you look down here, it says that we have 760 meters per second of delta V. We do not need 760 meters of delta V right now. I like to drop it down to about 42. And then the other thing you're going to do is you want to look at your thrust of weight. We do not want to be at 9.57. Okay? That's uh, nine and a half times stronger than gravity, right? So we're going to come down and try to bring this to about 1.5, 1.6, right around there is fine. So we got that set up. And now we need some science. So we go down here into our science tab. Oh, and I, I think I skipped over engines. So that's where you find your solid fuel rocket booster. So what that means is there's no throttle control on this. Once we light it, it's going. So let's go ahead and get our science. These are mystery goo containers. And we're just gonna slap these babies on. You guys can put them on however you want to. Uh, just make sure you put them somewhere where they're not gonna hit the ground because they will explode. Uh, up here you have your little tools to either move objects around, 
as such. Right? Up and down, however you want to do it. If you hit the F key, it'll do offset for local, and it'll put it to the angle that it's actually at. If you go to absolute, it's going to be your straight up and down. I like to get on the local when I'm doing small adjustments like this. If you look down here on the toggle snap, um, toggle snap's great when you first get it locked on or if you're doing a big movement, but once you get it where you want it, I like to go ahead and hit the toggle snap. You can also hit C and put it on to where it doesn't actually toggle or it doesn't snap anymore. And then I just make some fine adjustments. Um, you have the rotate tool. You can either click here or hit three. And then I like to just kind of make sure that it's looks good. All right. Only thing we gotta do ne next is make sure our staging is proper. So you do not want your parachute and your engine going off at the same time. You want to have your engine go, then you want to be able to stage your parachute. Let's go ahead and give this a name. This is going to be Max Thrust 1. And we'll save it. And the other thing I like to personally do is I take the pilot out and I put a scientist in. So this is why I put the fins on here. And I'll show you why when we get to the launch pad. All right. Now that we're at the launch pad, I'll show you what I'm talking about. SAS. It's your T key. I can't because I don't have a pilot. So that means that when I fly, there is no stabilization control whatsoever. It's going to go whatever way you tell it to and then whatever way the aerodynamics tell it to. So I put these fins on to help give it a little more stabilization when I'm flying. All right, so everything looks good. Just double check that's good. And in five, four, three, two, one. Actually, cancel that. Not nominal conditions. We gotta gain science, right? I'll show you another little trick that I do. And a lot of you that play this game probably already know this and do this too, but with the scientist, I'm able to collect this data and restore that module. The other thing that is kind of silly is the crew reports can only have one on a command pod at one time unless you take it and then store it. EVA report and we're in. The crew report is now stored in the module instead of on the module I guess you'd say on the, at the command pod. And now we shall go five, four, three, two, one. Nice lift off, and what I'm going to do is come up and try to land right over here. So I'm just going to move this over just a hair, just to get some horizontal velocity. Making our way over here. Engine should go out now. Go ahead and hit spacebar to toggle our next stage. And we have a good chute opening, and it looks like we're going to come down right where we want to. So now that we're sitting up here, we can do some more science because now we're in uh, low atmosphere. So let's go ahead and get another crew report. Let's go ahead and observe the Mistrigo. Uh, we could technically get an EVA report right now. Unfortunately, we still have to upgrade the astronaut complex right here where the flag is uh, to do an EVA while we're not on the ground. Next thing we want to do is speed things up a little bit. This is slow. We're only going seven meters per second. So let's get down to the ground and we're going to use the little bracket keys down by the question mark. And as you can see, now we're going four times uh, our current speed. Right here we can toggle ground or sea level. Um, doesn't make a huge difference while we're doing this, but in a lot of missions, you're going to want to have your ground, radar ground level, instead of sea level, because you will smack into stuff that you don't want to, which you'll see later on in, in our playthrough. All right, we are coming down for a nice, gentle landing. So we're going to EVA again right here on the picture. And once we do that, we can 
collect, remove. We don't need to actually do that, but I'm ready to take our data there. We're going to EVA report. We're going to get back in. We're going to do another crew report, and we're going to do the mystery goo. And that's it. That's our first launch, and we were able to gather quite a bit of science right out the gate. So let's go up here. All you got to do is mouse over and hit the recover vessel. All right, let's take a look at how we did. So our science, we gained 29.3 science with a total of 36 science now. If you hit the next, these are all the parts we got back. One of the important things in career mode is you're gonna wanna be cost effective. Landing on the crawlway got us a 98% return on our parts. So that means that our flight, we gained back 2,757 credits. And our crew, Bob, didn't really get a whole lot of anything because we didn't do a lot yet. And we got a total reputation of 14 now. All right, so let's go spend the science that we finally earned. So once you get in here, this is your tech tree. And we're gonna just start out engineering 101. The reason why I'm going this route is because it has science in it. And the more science we can get in the beginning, the better we are. Uh, that one gains some more engines, but it doesn't give us any science. So I'm gonna hit that one. The next one I'm gonna go with, cause we still have 31 science left, is survivability. This is giving us another science uh, module that we can use. Now we have 16.3 left. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the basic rocketry. And as of right now, we do not have enough for anything else. So next we need to get some more contracts because as of right now, we can only get two contracts at a time. So what you want to look for are some easy ones that you can knock out relatively quickly. This one right here will definitely be good. We have five hours to get to where we can knock this one out. So we need to kind of work on this quickly and make sure we can start taking these bigger contracts. One thing I would suggest doing are something like this. We're already using a flea booster, so why not use it again? Because when we launch it, we're going to get paid for it. So let's take that one, and let's take this decoupler real quick. All right, so we got our two. The next thing we're going to do is add the new science parts that we got. So let's go in here hit the C key for snap. And what I like to do, oh, another thing too. So we're only putting one on right now. As you can see in here, if you hit the X, that's how many you're gonna put on. And if you hit shift X, it goes backwards. Or you can just go all the way around to one again. So let's go ahead and put one on, which is actually two, because we're on the, the uh, oops, two. Did I put three on? Okay. And we'll go ahead and set this one up. Uh, one of the things you're seeing, I'm flipping these around, uh, your WASD keys uh, will do those different movements. So you don't have to always go to your rotate key to do that. You can do them right here. And if you hold down the shift key, it'll do smaller increments. All right, so there we go. We got all our science on board and this ship is costing us 63.98. I'm gonna save it so we don't have to keep remaking it. And I'm gonna launch one more time with our scientist. That looks good. All right, let's give it a shot. All right, welcome back to the launch pad. Bob is ready to go. I don't see any issues on why we shouldn't be able to take off. The one thing you will see though, is some of our science uh, doesn't actually take all the science the first time you do it. So for like this mystery goo container, we still can gather another seven tenths of science. So let's go ahead and take that because we have our scientists that can reset these. The other thing we can do is 
log pressure. And you can see here, if we recover this one, it gives us full science. If we transmit it, it only gives us 2.5 science, so 3.6 to 2.5. Temperature scan, same thing. Different amounts, but you can see that if we take it and not transmit it, we will get all the science. Uh, a good example here is the crew report. We took that one, it gives us 100% science. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take these and I'm going to take this and restore it and get back in. And now we're going to launch. So what we're going to do is go right back to the same spot again. Now all I'm doing this for is because, oh you know what I did not do that I should be showing you, is I didn't add the uh, TD12 decoupler. So let's go ahead and do that right now. We've got a little science out of the mission, that's great, but what I want is to get as many mission uh, contracts in one launch as possible. That didn't cost us any money, it just took a little extra time. So let's go ahead and put the decoupler down here. I'm just going to put it down like that. I'm going to set the percentage to zero. <clears throat> Excuse me. And as you can see right here, I have them both staged together at the same point. So that means our decoupler will test and our rocket will test at the same time. Now, I didn't save that because those decouplers, I'm not going to keep putting a decoupler at the bottom like that. I'm literally doing it just to complete this mission, this contract right here. So as you can see, I have a green check mark saying that I am on Kerbin and I am landed. So all we got to do is test that by hitting the space bar. Same thing with the flea booster. So in five, four, three, two, one. As you see right here, I got, I went from five to seven and both turned green. So that means that we have completed those contracts. And this thing is going out of control right now. This is what I'm talking about not having SAS, but we will fix it. You can still steer a little bit while you're flying just because of the aerodynamics. Now we might be a little off there because I was too busy talking about contracts instead of um, flying this, but even if we're off, which it looks like we're going to be, we can still gather. This is a new biome. This is new science for us right here, so it's going to be fine. Uh, one thing we need to do before we land is go ahead and take the remainder of this. And you can, as you can see right here, there's still going to be more left over. And that was my mistake because I didn't... Here, let's take a time out. Make sure that when you are doing a time warp, that before you touch the ground, or if you're gonna move something or do anything, you stop it. Because if you don't, stuff like that happens. So I just buried my engine in the ground and knocked our, uh, our flaps off. So let's go ahead and collect all of this delicious science here. Science is collected. There's like no sound on this whatsoever. Why is it so quiet? Interesting. I'll have to look at why, but that's fine. So now resume, we got our science, let's recover. There it is. Maybe it's because I'm used to... Let me turn that back down. I just wanted to see if, if there was a reason why it was so quiet. I normally play with a, chatter, a chatterer mod, and if you don't have it, there's like no sound whatsoever. Uh -huh. All right. So we're at 35. That means we have science to spend. The next things we want to look at are maybe stability. We have 
20 science for this and 18 science for that. So we can't do both. Um, I think right now our best bet is to go with, uh, let's go with general rocketry. All right, so we have general rocketry. So let's take a look at these missions down here. Escaping the atmosphere. It's pretty easy. All we got to do is get a craft from the ground 70,000 or more meters above Kerbin and then back down safely. But what you want to look at, being that we can only max two contracts at a time, is you want to look to see if there's anything else that we can attach to this to make us more money. Uh -huh. Boom. Is this a test or have? It says have. It's a haul. Okay. So one of the things you want to look for is when it says haul, it means you don't have to do anything else other than have it on your craft while you're flying. If it says test, it means you actually have to do something with that part. So this will work out really good. We're going to go ahead and take escape atmosphere and we're going to take haul the chute because this is the same chute that we use already on our craft. All right. Let's go ahead and build a rocket to escape the Atmo. So we can get rid of this and we're going to go ahead and get rid of this. I'm cheap. So I'm probably just going to go ahead and build a really cheap craft to get us up and down as best as we can. Heat shields. Okay. Uh, I'm a little picky. I like to make all my stuff look all lined up, so please forgive me if you see me doing a little bit of detail work here. Heat shield. All right. I'm going to just show you an example of what I'm talking about here. We're going to put a decoupler in and put our, our uh, what is it called again, the hammer. All right, so this says we have 1394 Delta V. Your heat shield starts off with 200. We do not need anywhere close to 200 ablator on this uh, ship. I'm going to go down to 20. Look at what our Delta V did. 1479 compared to 1394. We do not need that much of later. The other thing you want to look at too is your thrust weight. We do not need to be that high on our thrust weight. We're going to be in the higher atmosphere when this goes off, and so we do not need a lot of power on it. Okay, so decoupler. And I'm going to go ahead and put this bad boy on here. This is the thumper. And now this has no uh, control to it. So we're going to go ahead and put some flaps on. This will just help stabilize us as we're lifting off in the thicker atmosphere. OK, as you can see, we're at 2.4 thrust weight. So we're two times the strength of gravity right now. We want to bring that down a little bit. Probably right there is fine. Anywhere between 1.4 and 1.6, you're a little on the high end of 1.6. I like to be more around 1.4 to 1.5. There you go. We'll call this max thrust two. We have our science on board. Did we unlock anything new that we want to use? I'm going to go ahead and put a um, communications antenna on. Uh, this little guy, the Communitron 16S, is going to let us uh, send back our crew reports because we cannot get out to collect them while we're traveling, and we're going to pass a couple different spots to get crew reports. The last thing we always want to do is check our staging. So we want to first stage to be our main booster, then to couple, then our next booster, then to couple, parachute. Now I like to, personal preference, put those together so I never forget to do my shoot. Or you get busy talking about something or sidetracked 
and you accidentally forget, and then all of a sudden you see that you killed your Kerbals. So everything looks good there. I'm going to go ahead and save, and let's go out to the launch pad. Wait. Let's put Jeb in for this mission. Now save and launch. All right, so we're back on the launch pad. Let's go ahead and take a look here. We want to check all of our staging, make sure it's all right. Jeb's good to go. Um, I don't see any other issues here. So our plan here now is to go up and over and hopefully complete this contract here and escape the atmosphere. This one might be a little iffy because I didn't really gauge my speed from our launch. So we'll have to see if we meet the requirements. If not, no big deal. We can do it in the next one, but we will definitely escape the atmosphere. In five, four, three, two, one. And we're off. I'm going to just start to lean over a little bit because if I start getting too fast, uh, it becomes very hard to do anything with these fins because the atmosphere and the speed in which we're traveling basically cause us to be like an arrow and it's not going to turn or move any way we want it to go. All right, let's see, we are at 2000. How's our speed? It looks like we're going to accomplish this contract, which we did right there. So it turned green. That's a good thing. So our next big thing that we want to look for is 18,000 meters. 18,000 meters means that we are in high atmosphere and it means there's more science for us to do. I believe there's some science right now as we're coming across the water in low atmosphere, but I don't want to waste our, um, I don't want to waste our, our space right now because we can only have one crew report at a time. I want the crew report for when we get up into space. As you can see right here, our periaps is 26,000. We're in 18. I like to wait till 20 just to make sure that our little guy up here doesn't start spinning all over the place. So we're good there. Let's move it over to the 45 mark. And let's go ahead and get this high altitude science or upper atmosphere science. Good. Good. And a crew report. Nope, I'm not going to do a crew report. We're going to save that for when we get to um, to space. I'm going to start bringing this over a little bit more now uh, because I want more horizontal velocity than I want vertical. And one thing, I, I know I put the science antenna on here, or the antenna on here to transmit stuff back, but I, f I forgot. When you're playing vanilla completely stock, this capsule only has 500 charge, and if I send anything back, we will run out of juice, and I will not be able to control this at all. Once I hit about 60,000 meters or 60 kilometers, I like to lay it over almost to zero or at zero. Uh, this is going to give us a lot more horizontal velocity, less uh, vertical, and it's going to keep us from going up too high, and it's going to give us a lot more burn time in the atmosphere to slow us down. Uh, before we hit the water. All right, so this tank is now empty and we will go ahead and, well, let's just wait. I'm gonna time warp a little bit, physics warp, and that means we're gonna speed up until we hit space, which is at 70,000 meters. Slow us back down, and boom, our contract is completed. We have achieved both. We are now currently floating in space. Unfortunately, we are on a suborbital trajectory, which means that we are not going to stay up here for long. Gather your science, and we'll take our crew report. Uh, 78 kilometers, we're coming up on 78. That's our periapsis. That means it's the highest point of our trip here. Uh, so once we hit the 78.87, uh, you'll see our vertical speed start to drop and then we will start traveling back down towards Kerbin. I'm gonna go ahead and 
point us straight up and down, and we're going to release our spent booster. And there it goes. And I'm just going to speed us up a little bit to get back to the atmosphere. So once we hit under 70 kilometers, we will be back in the atmosphere. So let's go ahead and put, important note, you want to put the butt end towards where we're dropping, okay? This is your ablator. This is what keeps your capsule from burning up. And as I said, we only put 20 ablator on there. I'll show you how little we use doing a small suborbital trajectory. Another thing too, good key tip here is go into your settings, go down to advanced tweakables and enable it. What that will do for you is, if you click on this right here on our shoot, it says wind safe. That means that you don't have to worry about setting your shoot, staging it, and having it activate as soon as it reaches an altitude or a, a minimum pressure. It will not open unless it is safe to open. As you can see, it's red right now. Uh, we're way out of the atmosphere for it to open, but we're also going way too fast for it to be open. Another thing too, uh, we don't have a lot of stuff causing any issues with our aerodynamics, so we should be able to take our SAA, uh, SAS off, and this should relatively want to stay ass first, or butt first, excuse me. As you see, we're starting to hit the thicker atmosphere. We're traveling at 1,900 meters per second. That's orbital speed. We're at 17, seven, or 1730 uh, surface speed. And as you watch the ablator being eaten away as we return back to Kerbin, but you'll see how little we actually used up. And it's just a waste of your delta V by keeping that at 200 all the time. Now sometimes if I have a really small payload and I'm using this, I will keep it higher just because I want the weight to keep the weight end going forward. But for something like this, you don't need that. Look at that. We're already done. We spent, you know, seven, less than seven, six, uh, 66 on 667. 6.67 on uh, our ablator. As you see, this is already armed and staged because we staged it with the release, and there it goes. It opened on its own once it was safe. Okay, the next thing we'll need to remember is we can time warp right now, but before we hit a thousand meters, we want to slow down because the chute's going to open. And then the next time we want to slow down is before we hit the water. So let's watch this number here, and we'll slow ourselves back down. Open, and once you're opened and it pretty much did its uh, reduction in speed, then you can go ahead and speed ourselves back up again. Now you can jettison this if you want to shed weight, uh, but realistically we don't need to, and it's just one more thing. If you're going to land on ground or something, that will protect your capsule when you hit from higher speeds. Alright, so we made our water landing. First thing we're going to do is uh, go ahead and take our science out of these. We're going to take our crew report. We're going to do our EVA report and we're going to get back inside and we're going to go ahead and log more science because in the beginning the most important thing you can do is log science. Alright, let's go ahead and recover. All right, look at that, 121 science. We're at 300,120 kerbucks. 
let's take a look here. Let's go ahead and unlock this because we're going to want to use it. And the next thing I want to do is this because we're going to get our probes, we're going to get batteries, and we're going to get a little bit more science uh, modules to use. And then the next one, I personally like to go with this because that probe does not have SAS, and this will help us stabilize and control it. Well, guys, that is going to wrap it up for this first episode. Uh, I hope you liked it. I really would like to hear your comments on is there any mod you guys want me to add on to this as we play through, or do you want me to keep it strictly vanilla? And, you know, even how far you want us to go with it. Uh, make sure you hit the like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. And this is Max Thrust. We'll see you soon.